Hey guys, Summer Cecilia Jr. here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review the movie Resident Evil Death Island. If you end up enjoying this full movie review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. I want to head over to my petition to help out smaller YouTubers, second and third to my Patreon and PayPal, where you can help support me and my channel directly, and fourth to my Discord server. We could join, collab, chill, and do all that cool stuff for free, and chilling will be reminded at the end of the review. With all that out of the way, let's get into Resident Evil Death Island. So, I saw the trailer for this somewhere on Twitter a few months ago, really, and boy was I excited. Uh, I'm a pretty decently sized Resident Evil fan, I would consider myself, and seeing all the legendary characters come together for the first time, really, uh, all together, I should say, is, was quite the, you know, I suppose, nostalgic trick, as it were, to already get me invested in wanting to see this movie. Now, it is rather unfortunate that this was slated to come around the same point and not even that long after the Barbenheimer shenanigans that are I guess exploding the, the the cinemas uh so yeah there's that to deal to contend with but i it is rather unfortunate that resident evil death island would more than likely fall under the radar here which is again doubly unfortunate considering that i think this movie is utterly fantastic first and foremost and if there was ever a concession or anyone who still believes for whatever reason that all video game movies adap you know, adaptations are bad uh, once again here's another movie that just proves that theory dead wrong as if that wasn't proven actually quite a bit ago but you know point with still withstanding is that I would actually even point to some of the earlier Resident Evil animated movies or the Bayonetta movie uh or the animated Mortal Kombat movie with Scorpion, uh, if you haven't seen that, or, you know, uh, you know, there's some less ad ad adapted video game movies like the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, not well adapted, but still a solid movie, so it still, I believe, falls under that parameter of a good video game movie. Not Again, not well adapted from the video game, but, you know, there isn't... I, I'm not gonna say there isn't much, but still. Point being, uh, before I go any further, if you are a fan of Resident Evil, I would highly recommend clicking off of this video. I normally don't say this, but... And watch this movie, first and foremost. I think this is the best Resident Evil anime movie thus far out of the ones I've seen. Hell, I'm just gonna say it. I think it's the best Resident Evil movie thus far. I mean, it easily beats all the live-action movies, and like I said, it even beats all the other animated ones, too, for me. So yeah, top tier Resident Evil is here, baby. So without any further ado, let's get into the story and plot and be as objective as possible. So with that out of the way, we actually begin in Raccoon City. In the initial outbreak, for those unfamiliar, uh, the outbreak is dealing with the initial zombie outbreak in Raccoon City, and we're following a bunch of uh, Umbrella soldiers who were, uh, you know, ordered to essentially take in high-end, uh, you know, people, and essentially leave the civilians behind. And as we're sort of, follow, uh, sort of following this group, we cut to them at a portion later on. It does like this abrupt cut later on to several of them being hurt. And only two of them remain as uh, left to be, you know, trying to deal with this situation. Uh, they are told that they have to quarantine the others. Uh, and they have very little information by the sound of their confusion when they first arrive here in the beginning intro. So, as they see some of the uh, their fellows being 
turned into fellow zombies, unfortunately. Uh, one opens fire while the other is screaming in agony, or, you know, screaming for them not to continue doing this. Meanwhile, we cut to some point in 2015, uh, and I believe, if I, if I believe, if I understand all of the current timelines of Resident Evil, the games, actually, uh, I'm assuming this takes place probably shortly after Resident Evil 6's timeline. Again, based on where everyone is, including Chris, because Chris turned to, like, the dark side in the canon, or, like, not in the BSAA anymore at the very most in Resident Evil 7 and 8, if I remember that correctly. Um... So anyways, uh, so yeah, it takes place at some point after 6, Resident Evil 6, the video game. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we continue. So anyways, he gets a mission to intersect this truck, pretty basic. However, on his way, he gets interfered with this blonde woman, whose name I actually didn't even catch initially. But, based off of her abilities, she seems to have some level of enhancement. Then, we cut over to uh, Claire, Claire Redfield, uh, who is currently at the beach looking at this bitten orca whale. All the while, we then cut to Jill Valentine, our, the poster middle character. The OG, uh, the OG OG Resident Evil character, as it were. Uh, so she's looking around this building, not waiting for backup, uh, and checks on this body. However, she gets tackled by a zombie and promptly deals with it. Shortly after, Chris Redfield uh, of the BSAA shortly joins to help her out a little bit there. Then and finally, we cut to our final character, Rebecca Chambers who is a uh, lead scientist now, I suppose. Uh, and Chris is checking in with her and saying how... Uh, and talking about the, the, the video game canon, she's talking about how Jill was dealing with her brainwashing. This is in reference to Resident Evil 5. In that game, Resident e in Resident Evil 5, Jill is taken or brainwashed by Albert Wesker and is forced to try to kill her allies. So we cut to her shooting uh, some targets and Chris checking in and wanting her off. And speaking of canon, we also get uh, Chris mentioning, and this is why I am assuming this takes place at some point after 6, he mentions Pierce, who only m appears in Resident Evil 6 as Chris's partner. Uh, and he talks about how they've been in this fight for so long that they have actually started to get numb to it. And how they need to avoid doing that at all cost. We then cut to our evil group which does consist of that woman I met that blonde woman I mentioned earlier and a forced doctor in uh, this uh, endeavor named Dr. Taylor being forced by our main antagonist slash villain who I'll talk about more and reveal more about who he actually is a little bit later on. But what I, what I will say for now is in terms of interesting antagonist, I think this is the most interesting antagonist Resident Evil has pulled out ever, quite frankly. Uh, yes, Wesker is still the most over-the-top villain, and he is a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. Though, interesting is not a word I would apply to Albert Wesker. He's very, um, again, more of a, uh, a over-the-top sort of guy in, the, in those regards. Uh, speaking of our main villain, he seems to be willing to play a little bit of Russian roulette with himself and the Doctor, and uh, fortunately for himself, he seems to not uh, 
kill either of them himself or his doctor or person who he's working close with for the time being. All the while, we cut back to Chris, Jill, and Claire, who all now uh, gathered some enough intel from each other, kind of, to head towards a suspicious area, that being Alcatraz, the prison. Uh, so while the three of them are heading there, Rebecca is staying behind uh, to look after things. So, we also learned from the bad guy's side that Dr. Dr. Taylor left when he had the opportunity to. And he is waiting for his creation to come to fruition in Alcatraz. So, uh, we are looking at his... because apparently he set all of this in motion. We cut to Alcatraz, and we are immediately met with our content creator, uh, being like, ooh, I'm in the jail, oop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. And seemingly, without bites or any form of that, or air visible air contingents, people just seemingly turn into zombies, which is a new threat and form to the Resident Evil, uh, you know, database as far as I'm, I'm personally aware anyway. I could be wrong, but I think that's accurate to, again, what I know. So yes, uh, Chris shoots down a zombie, people are freaking out, and more zombies are forming seemingly again almost out of nowhere. And well, again, I'll talk about how clever I think this is, because I do think there is like, quite a bit here to take chomps on out of, again, with our most interesting villain. Meanwhile, Jill gets a little separated and saves a cop, but unfortunately, not even too long after, the cop turns and Jill has to handle that. So, Jill's looking around on her own, she gets a little bit separated, and we cut away to the liquors, uh, the creature you see on the top of the poster there, with the long tongues, being unleashed. So... We see that the villain, uh, or our, our antagonist, is one of the two guys from the intro, and his pal was named JJ. They are fighting over the gun, as we see in our continuation of the flashback, as it were. And again, we see him attempt to pull the trigger on himself. Uh, it is very clear that he is uh, ready to uh, check out at any point in time throughout the entire movie. So, anyways, Chris and Claire uh, are prepping up together. Uh, so, bro siblings are finally uh, just, you know, taking on stuff together, which I, I think is like the first time they've been like that uh, outside of the movie in a good way, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, anyway, we see that Jill's continuing to check the sewers. And, lo and behold, as she's fighting more, she bumps into Leon, who seems to be on his own separate investigation that also brought him to Alcatraz. So, now the two of them together uh, continue to handle the zombies that are forming and the liquors, which there are quite of a horde of them, and dealing with those as well. They try the silent route, which... Uh, for those unfamiliar with Resident Evil, liquors are uh, sound-based. If you make a lot of noise, the liquors will move towards you, etc., etc. So they try that route. It doesn't quite work out, but they handle it just fine. So Cliss and Claire, in the meantime, find some rando guy that survived uh, named Tony. But this is, as we'll learn later, an alias, and this guy seems to be deeper in the pockets, as it were, when it comes to this whole situation. Uh, so, all the while, Claire and Chris are also now fending off their own horde of zombies, and we cut back to Jill and Leon in the tunnels. So Leon finds this hidden path, where the draft is, 
and they move into this short corridor with the water just beneath them. All the while, Chris and Claire uh, both get hit with something that they seemingly don't see. And the villain comes out and finally reveals himself to them, as well as the blonde woman we saw earlier in the movie. We cut back to both Jill and Leon. All the while, while all that has been going on, we cut. We finally cut back to Rebecca, who has made contact with Hunnigan, who has made uh, several contacts to try to check in with Leon. That has been a bust. Uh, so Rebecca has been told to try to, you know, make sure the teams are all right and make sure that they're going to be a okay in terms of vaccin vaccination and stuff like that. So she's prepping on that front. All the while, we learn that uh, Tony was a short name for Anthony and that he has been helping with what has been called bio drones. And uh, Leon is not happy, let's say that for free. All the while, the, the lot of them are now converging on a path. And indeed, uh, they learn about Chris and Claire from our main villain. So they begin to move towards Chris and Claire, who have been bitten by these bio drones. Uh, that are more slow acting than the rest of the bio drones because this guy wanted to torture our hero group a little bit here. So we finally learn, officially, that the villain slash antagonist of our movie is named Dylan Blake. Again, he was the one of the two guys in the flashback. And after being instructed to uh, make sure to kill all of his allies and including his best friend, JJ, uh, from his higher-ups, he felt that the whole higher-up system was something that was systemically flawed, which makes him an interesting villain because he's able to bring that uh, sort of ideology and confront our heroes with that uh, system or flawed system and is able to point out that each of the systems that each of them work under more fit as a band-aid rather than any permanent real solution could ever achieve. And that is the unfortunate reality of a virus spreading that quickly is that you kind of have to, you know, set some uh, band-aids along the way. All the while, I believe the woman the blonde woman. I wrote down her name was Eris, but I think that was referring to her father? Question mark. Yeah, she apparently has some history with Leon that I'm actually not familiar with. So, if there's anybody that has seen this movie or just know if Leon's messed with somebody who, and then someone else wanted revenge on Leon, let me know in the comments because I really don't know what this is in particularly referring to anyway so uh, Dylan uh, speaking of uh, on his tirade is talking about how each of them are like essentially pawns in the this game of uh, you know the echelons of where they have placed themselves essentially and indeed we cut back to that flash back the final one and it is of, indeed, Dylan killing JJ because he got infected, too. And the one thing I do sort of uh, feel should have been a part of his dialogue, just the one bit I feel like it's missing, I think he should have actually did mention that he was a part of the Raccoon City thing. I think that would have hit the group a little bit harder since so many of them were a part of the Raccoon City, you know, debacle. So I do, I do think that that connection should have been just outright just said in the movie. Since, we, at least in terms of meta, we as the audience know that, but they do not. They do not know that he was also a part of the Raccoon City uh, outbreak. At least I don't think he ever mentions it at any point. 
Anyways, Rebecca, very cutting to her, is now moving in via boat. And, uh... And just by the by, the other two get infected with those biodromes, the slower acting ones, so Rebecca is the only one who can currently save all of them. And her group gets attacked by a possessed or rather bio mutated shark. And Rebecca is the only one who remains with the cure in tow. Meanwhile, Dylan shoots Anthony because he wants to do it again, and he leaves out of all of them Jill alone, which I find the most fascinating. Because talk about two sides of the of a similar coin. Because Jill, as I already mentioned before, canonically wise, at least in terms of this movie, was brainwashed uh, into killing her friends, whereas he, Dylan, was ordered to kill his friends slash allies. So, very close, the only distinction being that Dylan, you know, got the end result and Jill did not. Um, so, again, relatively close of one another, and just that one distinction has caused that far adrift in how they see the world. So, uh, Leon throws a flashbang uh, with the willpower that he still has remaining in Jill, in the meantime, since she's the only one free from the bio drones uh, bite, she runs away. And more bio drones are spawned to essentially uh, carry out, you know, his targeted, uh, essentially, because he wants to uh, take out the top people, as it were. Uh, and Chris talks about as, uh, you know, this guy's dying, this Anthony guy, because he got shot. Uh, so Chris is talking about how saving the world is the hard part. Uh, destroying it is actually what's what would be the relatively easy way of going about doing things. And in his dying ways, he gives them this password that gives them access to something or other. Uh, anyway, Jill sees Rebecca while she's heading away and tells her that the allies are up ahead and that she will continue on moving forward on her own. So she heads for the incubation where these uh, Jones are coming from while Rebecca heads back to the others. And we see that the floodgates to the opening are now, well, opening because it was closed beforehand. Meanwhile, we see that Rebecca gives the cure first to Leon, so Leon is the first to be restored, so he gets a bit further ahead than the other two that are still, uh, you know, under. Oh, that's what I wrote her name as, Marisa, not, uh, uh, Eris. I'm not sure who Eris is, again, I'm not familiar with that name, so if, again, if anyone knows who, what that's in reference to, or if they know who Marissa is in, in lieu with Leon, then let me know in the comments, because I have no clue who this is. And I'm a little bit interested, even though she dies by the end of the fight. And I will say, an impressive fight, where clearly Marissa has some sort of form of enhancement over Leon, but Leon still comes out on top, showing how badass Leon is when it comes to this stuff. Speaking of, Jill calls out Dylan, uh, and tells him, like, hey, man, you know, you're, you're crazy for going in this way. Despite that, he still injects himself with some new virus and falls into the water. All the while, Leon continues his fight and kicks her, and the end fight is into this impalement towards the chest. While, meanwhile, the others eventually join Jill, as we see now a mega biomutant formed out of what Dylan is now turned into. So our typical Resident Evil formula is coming into play at this point. Uh, 
and our entire group has now reconvened and they're in this bay which was also like an armor's cache so they have access to various weapons which it does come across as a little funny because they just sort of lift up these rocket launchers that are just there now uh and i get it it was it was set up earlier that this was an army but still look it still looks a little bit funny and you know, in very Resident Evil fashion, of course, we have the rocket launchers at some point in the, in all the sequence. Anyway. So, uh, Claire and Rebecca are trying to, uh, stop the Jones from getting out. And, uh, Jill, we see Jill and Chris getting slammed by this creature. Uh... And after the fact, Jill makes her way to this plasma rifle, uh, but it's unfortunately in close range only, so Chris and Leon are now tasked with moving him, this beast, closer. Uh, meanwhile, Rebecca wants to use uh, the Jones to their advantage, and at first I was a little confused by it, but she has the Jones attack this creature as well, essentially, is what she was getting at. So Jill indeed blast it, and uh, unfortunately gets a little pushed away here. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Rebecca has used the drones, and they're invisible to the, or close to invisible to the human eye, which was why uh, the people were turning so abruptly earlier in the movie. And it's overwhelming this creature with, you know, all these different injections and whatnot. So, Jill lights up a flare so that this creature will go after her. Meanwhile, Leon and Chris can set up this two-way rocket launcher, is the only way I can describe this weapon as, as they shut down the path of escape while also the path of escape uh, gate shutters on the creature itself. So, they double task it, and Jill gets out from under the water. We then see them cut to outside, uh, wanting a vacation and just being done with this whole ordeal. Indeed, we see a bunch of helicopters arrive, getting ready to pick them up. And that was Resident Evil Death Island. And while I say this movie does showcase each character's strengths and even some of their weaknesses, as uh, alluded to by Jill's, you know, in terms of their own canon stuff uh, from J again from five and Jill and and six with Chris and dealing with those outcomes uh, each character has a moment to shine as well and again we have our most interesting villain all on top of just seeing all of our characters from the Resident Evil franchise be at the top of their game essentially uh, or have, again, at the very most, moments to shine throughout the movie. So yeah, really solid Resident Evil movie, uh, and an animated one at that, how about that? So uh, in terms of a score, I'm gonna give this one a 9 out of 10. I think this movie is extraordinarily solid. Uh, like I said, there are very minor things that I would want would I think would have adjusted it to make it even a slightly better uh, again very minor changes uh, but overall still a fantastic movie I highly recommend again if you are a fan of Resident Evil uh, definitely uh, a must watch for those individuals at the very most and that is my review of Resident Evil Death Island. If you ended up enjoying it, this review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. I want to add you to my petition to help out smaller YouTubers. Second and third to my Patreon and PayPal, where you can help support me and my channel. And fourth to my Discord server, you can join, collab, and do all that cool stuff. And until next time, everyone, bye-bye. Uh,